Seeing games break is inherently fun, and it can happen in various ways, such as glitches, cheat codes, or just straight up altering certain aspects of the game. Recently, I've been toying with the idea of corrupting Fire Emblem, and today I'm going to showcase some funny results from my experiments. We'll just be covering two games, Mr. Over the Emblem and Blazing Sword, and one particular method of corruption that I'll call alternate save stating. But maybe if I find making this video fun and it gets good reception, I'll make more. And with that, let's get into it. Now, alternate save stating is something I do where I make a save state in a ROM hack and then use the state in the original game. For Mystery of the Emblem, I'll use a ROM hack called Veraku Emblem, a ROM hack that changes a lot of the maps and replaces Marth with Violet. So with everything finally out of the way, let's break this game. So here we are in the, uh, you know, title screen of Mystery of the Emblem, so let's just see what happens when I load my state for Chapter 12 of Veraku Emblem. I'm actually taken to a map that does not exist in the original version of Fire Emblem 3, and you'll notice something immediately interesting about some of the characters. Uh, they have boss profile pick. Boss profile picks are just straight up broken ones. My favorite being Roger, who's down here. Let's see, where are you, Roger? Oh yeah, Jake is just a villager. So that's great. And Roger is actually a floor tile. As you can see on this map right here, he's the same as the floor tile that's on the map. So with that, let's actually start the chapter, and because this is chapter 12, the game thinks this is chapter 12 of Mystery of the Emblem and not Baraku Emblem, so it still plays the, Karn uh, the Garnef cutscene and it actually clips us out of bounds. As you can see, we're seeing an area of the map we're not supposed to see. Now this map was actually cut in uh, Mystery of the Emblem, so the Baraku Dev had that back in, but we're actually not supposed to be down here. As you can see, I can clip the cursor out of bounds, yep, up and down, look at that. I see how my main man Roger's doing. Oh, uh, fighter, level 50. Uh, and the game has crashed, actually. Oh, wait, no, no, it's back, it's back, it's back. But yeah, as you can see, let's see. And we can't check anyone else's stats. It really doesn't even think we're clicking on a unit right now, so we can't even move. And yep, so this is just a simple clip out of bounds glitch. Let's see what happens if we end the turn. Oh. No, oh, okay. So, yeah. This one is just a simple clip out of bounds glitch. And we can't move our units and it appears the game has crashed, so on to the next one. Now, here's a state from Chapter 2. This is a relatively simple one. You know, I deploy everyone. Like this. And when the game actually starts, only one member of the wolf pack spawns. Uh, yep. Here he comes. And it's actually Violent himself. So Violin, the social knight, so this one we actually have a... Oh, I can't even... Hold on. <laughs> I can't even move my cursor to these guys. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Let's... Yeah, nope. Again, the cursor can't even go to him. And now the cursor is eternally stuck to him. So this one's a simple one. Just a simple tale of two violins, and with that, on to the next one. Now, this one is an interesting one because it takes place on a Baraku Emblem original map. So if we start right here... What? The rebels have entered the castle? So, this is actually supposed to be the prison chapter, you know, the one where you get Tomas and Ko. But the thing is, this is a very cool original chapter. So let's see what happens if I try to get the chest here. Nothing. So the map data for this is completely messed up. Like, I spawn inside a wall, I can still move around though. Actually. Yeah, I can still move around and everything. But the interesting thing comes when I suspend, and then resume the chapter. Yep. So let's just resume the chapter. The game will actually reload to the original chapter. And this uh, mage dragon over here is not having a good time. Just straight up not having a good time. It's glitching out of existence. But why don't we see what happens? Oh, Maria can not move outside of the wall, unfortunately. Let's see, where's Marth? Here's Marth, not looking like Violent this time. So why don't we actually try to actually beat this chapter? It'd be easier if Maria could... Hold on. This guy can use the warp, probably. So I'll trade Maria's warp to Boa. Uh, yep. Right here. And let's wait. And now why don't we just do a warp wolf away so he can defeat the boss. And let's actually try to see what happens when we actually complete one of these chapters. Let's see. Oh, I accidentally waited. <laughs> Gotta love the mystery of the emblem UI. You got to love it, I say. I say, I say, I say. 
Everyone's tired. Okay, now let's just warp wolf over here. Actually, wait, nobody's even on the throne. I can just straight up warp uh, Marth. Or Violent, or whoever he is in this glitchy hellhole. So why don't we just do that? Yep, even the enemies are clipping. I wonder where that dragon went. Is it still there? Nope, it's, uh... I don't know where the dragon is. Oh, there it is. There it is on the stairs. Yep. That's great. Alright. Let's see what happens if we seize. Alright, it seems like everything is just kind of progressing as normal, actually. And it seems like we're getting the Parthia. Save game, no. And it seems like if you beat a chapter... Just goes on to the next one normally. Alright, and here we are at chapter 8 of Baraku Emblem and the final corruption for Mystery of the Emblem. Again, this is another map that was cut in the original Mystery of the Emblem, and I assume since they added this map they had to replace another one that was already in the game. And I assume that's chapter 2 for reasons you're about to see. Since we spawn over here again in the wall, and Agma appears to us on the water, and yep. And this is just a funny little one, I thought, since the x pros kind of appear on the water and they're not really uh, supposed to do that. Now, yep, and then a bunch of ones spawn up there, I guess, after the map starts. Okay. And then a dragon who's not properly on his thing. Now, I wonder what happens if we suspend and come back to it. So Why don't we just see? Why don't we just see? And resume chapter... And we're actually at Chapter 9 of Mystery of the Emblem. And the tiles are glitching out. This is really the first instance of, like... Okay, there's some guys down here for some reason. Of, like, glitchy effects we've seen. And Mathis is in prison. <laughs> oh, no. Mathis is in prison. That's not good. And the tiles are just really glitchy and uh, nothing makes sense. Now, I ended off with this one because this is really the only, uh real thing that really makes the game mess up quite a bit and we're gonna be seeing that quite a bit in the GBA entry and with that on to Blazing Sword. Now nothing too interesting really happens if you load a last promise state in Blazing Sword you just get stuck on the menu here but the opposite is true if you load a Blazing Sword save in the last promise which we are about to see. So here we are in a Fire Emblem 7 map. I've loaded a Fire Emblem 7 state into the last promise, and you know, everything's fine. It's just Vida. Uh, something you would expect for a hack that replaces characters. But if we go over here, uh, it starts to get a bit more interesting. And even more interesting than that if we actually end the turn. Now, we can't level up at all, because if we do, if we level up at all, uh, the game will crash, since I guess it just doesn't know what to do with the units. Uh, and the events from the last promise are happening, but yeah, now it's just, uh, everyone's profiles are strange. And if I go over here, <laughs> it's, uh, this character, I don't even know what to call it anymore, this paladin. This generic paladin has a, uh, rather interesting profile. So, uh, I'm pretty sure the more turns we wait, we wait the more corrupted it'll actually get. And it's still using reinforcement data from the last promise, so in a few turns, I think you'll see something very interesting happen. Uh, yep. I think... Yep, so let's just end the turn one more time, and as... Yeah, two enemies just... I mean, two allies just spawned right over there. And these aren't corrupted, since they... I, they, I assume they loaded after we did the states. This is just normal for what the last promise is supposed to be. Meanwhile, everyone over here is still doing... Uh, terribly. Uh, real good lookers right here. I'm waiting for something to happen in the middle there. Huh. Yeah, oh yeah, enemies just appeared out of nowhere. So again, if I level up, the game will crash. So I'm not really going to do that. And with that, that's, uh... Trust me, this is only the beginning of how far this rabbit hole goes. So with that, I will see you in the next Corruption. So here we are in one of the first chapters of Hector Hard Mode. You know, nothing strange, everything's normal. Except, uh, once I take my cursor off Hector, and put it back on, and take it off... Oh no, oh no, it's happening again. And now his sprite is just completely messed up, and, like, you can hardly even see it anymore. Also, Matthew, even though he's a thief with the lockpick, cannot open the store, I assume since it's using Blast, promises map data on where everything is. And, yeah, now, you see, we could technically beat this map, if we could just get to this escape point right here, since that's the objective of this map in The Last Promise. 
but even if I break this wall right here, I'm, I'll am i try to break the wall. Weapon level increase, good for me, I guess. We have a cutscene from The Last Promise. Even if I try to break this wall, uh, nothing happens. The wall is gone, uh, but I can't move through it. Now, I, ju I cannot reach that escape point, and my quest to find action replay codes for this game where you could move through walls uh, didn't really work out, but something interesting does happen if I suspend. And resume in the next... So let's just resume. Enemies spawn in, and it just keeps spamming enemy phase over and over and over again until the map eventually ends. So that's that corruption. On to the next one. The next one's a real uh, doozy graphically. So here's the Kashuna chapter. Everything's, well, you know, not normal. We're gonna go back to the orange profiles, but it's kill Kashuna. Here's Kashuna, except he's just a mage. Oh, and look, well, would you look at that? Everything's bad and terrible now after I checked Kashuna's stats. And what happens if I end the turn? A cutscene from the last promise plays. Add dots throughout the enemy map. However, I have no mean to access Kashuna and actually route him since everything is terrible now. Everything is terrible now. Let's just do a round of combat. There we... And the game has crashed due to me getting a level up. So on to the last corruption for Blazing Sword. And I'll see you then. So here we are at endgame actually. Now the interesting thing happens when I move Hector all the way up here. A cutscene plays. I'm going to skip it. And oh, the game did a little oopsie doopsie in the graphics there. And it teleports us to the final chapter of The Last Promise. Now, um... <laughs> Uh, as I have not actually played The Last Promise, if you look at this guy's stats, they're, um, something, and let's see, let's check Kellogg's stats, uh, they're not something. And the real kicker is if I suspend here, if I suspend here, and I resume the chapter, and I go up here, <laughs> there are no enemies, and then I just die. So there's the conclusion to The Last Promise Let's Play some people were asking me for. And thus ends this episode of uh, Fire Emblem Corruption. I thought it was fun. If you have any own personal stories of your own corruption or how you can mess with Fire Emblem, leave suggestions. And as I said, if this is received, I'll, I'll do more in the future. Uh, <laughs> we certainly had some uh, funny effects this episode. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.